You know, I've been very fortunate in that I've been able to test and review a good number of wood stoves over the last few years. Most of them have been designed for hiking and backpacking. As a result, they tend to be smaller, compact, and relatively lightweight. But sometimes those same key features can actually work against performance. Sometimes you need a larger stove with a larger capacity in order to get the performance you're looking for. And that's where a stove like this one comes in. This is the Horizon Rocket Stove from Anave. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this stove, keep watching. Before we get started, I just want to thank the company Coolers.ca for sending this stove out to me so that I could share it with you. Coolers.ca is the Canadian distributor of Anave Horizon Stoves. Anave is a UK company where these stoves are made. So I've had this stove in my possession longer than I really should have before making the review. Part of the reason, of course, is that we've had ongoing fire bans here in Nova Scotia. Well, that's over now, and I've done my testing, and now I'm ready to share my thoughts with you. So what I thought we would do is start by going down to the tabletop. There's very few specifications to show you, but I want to talk about its design, and then we'll get outside, and I'll do some demonstrations with it, and we'll wrap the video up. All right, before we take a closer look at the Horizon Rocket Stove from Anive, I thought I'd share with you what came with it. Put the stove aside. So this is the tote bag that the stove arrived in. You can see the Anive name and logo on the side here. It's a clamshell style that opens up and the stove would fit down inside. Very nicely constructed. Appears to be very heavyweight. It is a ripstop nylon of some weight. It has a thin layer of padding on the inside to protect the stove. It has handles and shoulder strap, which is removable. So very high quality bag at that. Let's put the bag aside. And the only other thing it came with was this instruction manual and warranty information, contact information. Very simple, but it is nicely laid out pictorially on the inside. So we'll put that aside. Now let's bring the stove back into frame. And that's a bit of a challenge here because of course it is a relatively big stove, isn't it? Let's just talk about that. Its weight, four pounds or 1.8 kilograms. Dimensions, it stands 10.63 inches tall, which is 270 millimeters, and its diameter is 9.65 inches or 245 millimeters. So let's just talk about its design and where it comes from and why it excels at what it does. So basically, it's a rocket stove, and a good or well designed rocket stove are very efficient with their fuel. They use relatively small amounts of fuel to produce a lot of heat very cleanly. And that's where this design excels. It has all the classic characteristics of a rocket stove, which I'll point out in a moment. But this is a stove that's intended for someone who is looking for exactly that high heat, very clean fire, and very little fuel consumption. So yeah, this is something that might be very valuable and very usable in maybe third world countries where a lot of cooking is done indoors, which can be dangerous with regular wood fires or regular wood stoves, and where fuel is not all that prevalent either. So this is a great design for those reasons. But those same reasons or those same uh, key features make it very applicable for use anywhere. In fact, that's what this stove is all about. It's all about cooking with. This is not a campfire. This is not something you're going to sit around and enjoy the ambience of the flame. It is nice, but there are other stoves which will do that better. This is all about getting a fire started very quickly, using minimal fuel, producing maximum heat with very little to no smoke. That's what a rocket stove does best. And I'll, again, I'll talk a little bit more about its design in a minute. So uh, yeah, let's just talk about the design of this. So one of the things that's obvious here is it has this orange uh, cage around the outside of it obviously for safety. So this prevents anybody from getting their hands right up against the core central part of the chimney where they can burn themselves and quite severely because it does get hot. In fact, this cage is so effective is that you can actually grab the stove while it is burning and pick it up and move if you need to. Now, I wouldn't recommend that as a standard practice, but should you need to move the stove, you can do so with safety by just holding onto the cage. Now, the one time I can see moving this or the, the way you might 
use it more often in terms of moving it would be to face it into the wind. If you want it to face the feed port into the wind to actually accelerate the burn even faster, then you know, you can just move it whichever way is necessary. So let's just talk about the rocket stove design a little bit and then I'll talk about the materials it's made from. So the concept of a rocket stove is that there is a chimney, a central chimney where the combustion will take place and there is a ratio of the diameter of that chimney with its height. So uh, it's usually three to one, four to one. You want the diameter to be or the height to be three or four times whatever the diameter is. And when that happens, you get this drawing of air in through the feed port, drawing of air and up the chimney with the heat. And at that, as that air accelerates and moves through the fuel, the smoke is very efficiently turned into flame. So you don't get the uncombusted uh, materials coming out in the form of smoke. They're all well combusted and they come out with a lot of force and a lot of heat. Now those are the basic attributes of it. So it's a chimney basically is the best way to say it. But in order for this to be most effective it should be insulated. Now, a lot of the rocket stoves that are on the market that are of this size and diameter have some type of insulation around the central chimney. Some type of a cement or a refractory cement or perlite or vermiculite or whatever it is to insulate it. Because of course when you've got that chimney running up through the center, you risk losing heat through radiation out of the sides. So you don't get all the heat delivered at the top where you want it to. So it should have some type of insulation. Well, this unit does not have material insulation, but what it does have is a double wall chamber. So there's an interior, I don't know how well it's going to show it up because it's all suited down inside, but there is an interior chamber to this stove, to the chimney, and an exterior chamber. You can see the stainless steel here. So there is an air gap inside between the two of them and that's what causes or creates the insulation for this to uh, work effectively without increasing the weight or the bulk unnecessarily. So those are the basic characteristics of how the rocket stove is working. Now a couple more things. With the feed port you can see in through here, very standard, very uh, design that's uh, repeated on a lot of rocket stoves. You feed the wood in through here, but you also, this area is where the drawing of air, the air feed comes in. So not just the fuel, but the air. So what they have done here is you can see this uh, arrangement here, this A-frame type of arrangement, the air will flow in through here. Sometimes it's done with just a flat layer on the, across here or like a, a partition across here. But here they maximize the amount of fuel that you can stack into the burn chamber, but still have enough room for air to be drawn in underneath the wood into the center of the burn chamber. Now, if you look towards the back there, and that's a little hard, I think I should be able to pick this up on demonstration with it outside. The wood actually burns in the center or right in the center of the chimney. So the wood is not burning along its whole length. The only portion of the wood that combusts is the portion that's directly underneath the opening of the chimney. So that's what you want. You don't want all your wood combusting and flame moving backwards out. So how does that keep that from happening? And, that, and the reason it happens is because of that draw of air. So as the stove gets hotter, the air is drawn in even faster, forced up through the chimney, and that prevents a lot of flame from backing out of the feed port. Now, there is some, and you'll see that when I demonstrate, you'll get some flame working its way out, but there's a few tricks for helping that to, to prevent it from coming out all the way out. So as a result, you can use long sticks, <laughs> virtually as long as you want them to be, as long as they're of a proper diameter and properly loaded, the amount of that you put in. You can keep them as long as you want. You may end up having to support them out here, then as they're consumed, you just slowly push them in. So make sure that there's wood in the center area where the combustion takes place. Yeah, so that's the basic design and function of a rocket stove. Now, the materials used in this. So obviously the chimney itself, stainless steel, you can start to see some discoloration taking place on the stainless steel. It actually looks kind of nice. They get that rainbow type of an effect on it over time. The top and the bottom to me appear to be galvanized metal on the top and on the bottom. And I know someone's gonna make comment about that's not safe. Galvanized metals can release toxic fumes when heated. And yes, that is true. But here's been my experiences. Two things, one, 
This never gets that hot, not to the temperature that's required for galvanized materials to release the, those toxic fumes. It just doesn't seem to get that hot. Again, that's evidence of a very well-designed stove where the flame is being projected for all intents and purposes. That's what it looks like. It's like a flamethrower, as you'll see when we get it outside. So this area does not get really, really hot. And the same is said for the bottom. It just does not get all that hot. In fact, if you were to lay this down on a wooden table, you would not have enough heat transferring through the bottom of it to uh, cause any scorching or anything like that. So it could use it virtually on a picnic table. Now, I don't. I use this on, used it, well, here in my backyard, as you'll see, I have uh, uh, fire stones that I like to use them on just that's because that's what I do with my wood stove because some stoves will transfer a lot of heat down through. But you can use this with relatively safety because the heat is actually being generated and forced up through the chimney and it doesn't get all that hot. It doesn't get hot at all. I mean, you could probably feel the heat by holding it here, but it's not hot enough to burn you. The outside cage is, as I mentioned, you can grab the stove and pick it up and move it if you need to. I'll just give you another look at the star-shaped pattern of pots, pot supports and how it's designed and you can see it's somewhat concave towards the center and that works again in conjunction with the design of the stove so they can get pots of different sizes on here you can get large pots on here like you could get a cast iron dutch oven certainly a large cast iron fry pan on here you can get large pots i'll be using a, a 16 centimeter zebra billy pot on this for demonstration purposes but i have also used uh, a fry pan on this as well a large 10 and 10 centimeter or 10 inch cast iron fry pan. I will tell you, uh, you do still have to watch your heat control because this will produce a lot of heat. And even with a cast iron fry pan, heat distribution can be an issue if you get a lot of heat in one place. So while the flame is great for heating the pan up, I like to let the flames die down just a little bit before I start cooking in it so that the heat is distributed across cast iron. Of course, that's one of its uh, the beautiful benefits of the cast iron technology. All right, there's not a lot more to say about this stove. I think it's time we get it outside and light her up. All right, what I thought I'd do to get this going is I'm gonna do a top load first. So that's where you light a little fire in the, bo in the bottom there and start throwing a few sticks down just to get the stove itself heated up, get it drawing properly. Then I'll be able to feed longer sticks in through the port on the side. So I debated a couple ways of doing this, one with a uh, commercial fire starter. I'm just just going to do with a little bit of birch bark and some split pieces of uh, pine that I have and then I'll, I'll work up to the actually I have a little bit of fat wood here it just breaks off of ends of sticks I'm going to add that in so it's going to smoke as it gets going but once this is well caught on then uh, of course I can start feeding hardwood in from the side and the smoke will go down dramatically. All right, give that a couple seconds, you can see. Now, very light wind here today in my backyard. You can probably hear traffic noise behind me. Had it been windier and I faced the feed port towards the wind, I would have got an even, or would get an even faster draw, but it's pretty neutral right now, so it's not going to play a big part like that, but you can see already. Let me just back the camera up a little bit. All right, so just trying it from a bit of a different angle here so that I could uh, give you the full effect. Look how tall the flame is running out of that already. That will die down some, and so will the smoke as that initial burn kicks in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be turning the whole stove to, to my to my right, to the right of what it shows on the, towards the chair that you can see there on the right, so I can feed it in from there. Thought I'd give you a view in through the feed port before I start putting in the full fuel, so you can just see how it's burning inside there. I don't know if I can get a view from the down from the top. It's still burning the softwood, so not the cleanest smoke yet, but it will be in a second. I'm going to set back up and we'll start adding some good fuel. Starting to calm down, I can start feeding some sticks in. Some of these are pine, some of these are hardwood, birch and maple. Just splits of stuff that I have here for, well, actually for doing just testing, just like I'm doing here. That's more pine. I don't want to put any more pine in if I don't have to, because it tends to smoke, but 
Whatever you can get in the port is okay, just to make sure that you have space, of course. So here's one thing that might be helpful. Uh, the sticks are slanting upwards. That's just the nature of the, the way. If the sticks are longer than the port itself, then they're going to want to slant up. That actually does help feed the burn. Downside of it is sometimes, though, is they want to slide out. So sometimes you put a little something under here just to keep them from sliding out. And you can see you don't have to be too fussy about sizes or lengths. They uh, are all going to work. Yeah, they're good. They're starting to catch on now. I can start to hear the rocket stove actually drawing. I'll bring you in a little closer in a moment so you can see if that'll pick up on the microphone. I like to keep one stick handy just for pushing them in to ensure that they continue to feed in as the ends of them burn. I wonder if I lean in if you can hear that rocket draw. Not sure if that's picking up on the microphone or not. I'm going to try another view down from the top in a moment, but before we do that, I think I'll put the pot on, a pot of water, and see how that affects it if it does. 16 centimeter zebra billy pot, about half full of water, sits nicely on the pot rest the way they're designed. You have clearance all the way out to the edges, so you can get a pot larger than the diameter of the stove on there, but this is a good size pot for this, and as you can see, it had no effect on the smoke or the flame pattern. It's still working well. Contact with the whole bottom of the pot, some flames licking out the sides and licking up, and that'll only become more intense the hotter the stove gets. Yeah, that's working exactly the way you want a rocket stove to work. So another view in through the feed port. These are the hardwood sticks that I put in a few minutes ago. They're starting to shorten down already. Where's my push stick? So I can push them in. And what you're seeing is the burning primarily is taking place at the far end of the sticks, directly underneath the chimney itself. And that's what you're looking for. You don't want a lot of flame progressing back outwards. And it's not. It is a little bit, but it hasn't come outside of the port itself. Let's see if I can look in from the top. You can see a bit of a turbo action taking place as it spins around on the bottom a little bit. Also part of that chimney effect. Nice and clean, very controlled. Very nice. I'm really enjoying using this. All right, let's wrap this video up with a few more comments for the Horizon Rocket Stove from Anave. So you saw when we got it outside just how efficient and well-built a rocket stove this is. The way it lit up so quickly, the way the flames reached up with such intensity above the stove itself. Yes, it was a little bit smoky when I first started it up. There was a couple of reasons for that. One, of course, is I was using a little bit of pine because it ignites so quickly and it can be a little smoky. But once the stove heated up and I started feeding it some hardwood. There was no smoke whatsoever. Now the other thing is very controllable heat in the sense is I can control the amount of fuel I feed the stove and that controls the amount of heat it produces. So if you don't want a super intense flame coming up through the top of this, just don't feed it a whole lot of wood. I guess that's the easiest way to put it. All right, so who is this stove for? So this is obviously not a backpacking stove. Four pounds isn't exceptionally heavy, but it is rather big and bulky. So unless I really had a need for the stove when I'm out in the woods, it's not going to go with me, at least in my backpack. However, if I have some conveyance, if I'm taking it out in the wintertime on a pulk or a sled or something, or I have a, a bike that I can carry this on, or if I'm car camping, that's probably where the stove would serve very well is for car camping, maybe hunting camps and the like, where your primary means or primary need for is a stove that produces a lot of heat in cold weather that you can use to cook with. I think that's where the stove really shines. Easy enough to put this in the back of the car if you're going for a picnic somewhere where you're allowed to have fires, of course, and you can find some local wood or bring some wood with you to use. Really 
very efficient for doing that with. So those are my thoughts and my uses of this stove, but I'd open it up to you. What are your thoughts on this stove? Where could you see using this? And what do you think of its design? If you have any thoughts on that, please put it in the comments section below. I will be putting the links to coolers.ca, the people who sent this stove to me, but I will also put the links for Anive, the home company over in the UK. And I'd suggest you might want to take a look at their website because in addition to this stove, they have a whole range of tent stoves, which look very interesting. I don't know that we can get them in Canada yet or in North America, but I'm going to be asking about them, of course. All right. Until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.